know that you're a phoenix, so rise up from all those ashes today. Yeah, you were scarred, but you were sorry. You can call to the grave. I know you know that a lion is inside, sleeping in your heart. Step back and remember who you What up, Bride? It's your boy Mari, back again with another reaction video. Today, we're getting into Act 2. I am very excited. I enjoyed Act 1 immensely. I got way, way more invested in it than I expected to, and it impressed me basically in every part i think this is like part nine i don't know the point is we're starting act two thank you so much for coming along with me on this journey it has been a great one and we have another half to go so definitely make sure to subscribe if you haven't subscribed already just like with act one this is going to be broken up into parts so this is going to be the first part of act two so without further ado let's get into this i'll see all you guys on the other side and yes that was a bar okay 17 set set 17, 17, 17, 17, 18, 9. How does the bastard, orphan, immigrant, decorated war vet, unite the colonies through more debt? Fight the other founding father, still he has to forfeit. Have it all, lose it all. You ready for more yet? Okay, so back to motif madness. After act one, like I'm now just anticipating lots and lots of motifs, but I. I'm still impressed at how they're they're doing it in different ways. So this is this is obviously referencing the intro to Alexander Hamilton again, both using the intro piano melody section as well as uh, Burr doing like the narration and like you know the how does a bastard or you know that that part. Um, this one is interesting though, specifically with the, the piano part, which is what caught my attention. So I'm gonna have to go back because I really didn't hear much of what Burr said because uh, it it's pitched up. So it's, it's higher and it's faster, but it's also, it, it transitions like halfway through from that intro melody uh, from Alexander Hamilton into the um, the vocal top line melody from uh, My Shot, where it goes, uh, the Whoa o oh, Ohs part, which they also use that vocal line melody as a piano melody in right hand man which i thought was so interesting that they they took a vocal melody and then like played it on the piano in that song and they're doing it again here but it's now like woven into the piano melody from alexander hamilton and like several others that that piano melody has been used in a variety of different places but it's it started in the alexander hamilton intro and that's why i am like calling it that um but yeah weird even the the um piano leading up to that Sounds like the backing piano from, I also want to say Alexander Hamilton, but I'm, I'm actually not as confident on that one. But the, if you go back and listen to the, the piano leading up to like the little flurry of high notes that are the motifs that I'm talking about now, that is also a motif to something else. And I think it's also another section of Alexander Hamilton, but it's not, I don't have it like it's on the tip of my tongue. I don't have it like, I don't have the actual like section it is, but I, I'm pretty sure that's, that's also an Alexander Hamilton. So anyway, with that out the way, let's go back and actually listen to what Burr's talking about. Not too fast, someone came along to resist him, pissed him off until we had a two party system. You haven't met him yet, you haven't had the chance, cause he's been kicking ass as the ambassador to France. You simply must meet Thomas, Thomas. Okay, so um, Diggs is back. He's Thomas Jefferson now. I was already told like maybe 200 times leading up to Act 2 that there was dual casting in this where actors would be playing different roles. So I, I was anticipating that. I didn't know who was going to be who, though. So thank you guys for not spoiling that part. Um, so he's Thomas, he's Thomas Jefferson now. I guess Lafayette went... Yeah, 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 yeah. Lafayette went... That's interesting. Lafayette was a, or let me put it this way. Diggs was a Frenchman who left America to go back to France and came back as an American who left France to come back to America. Does, does that make sense? I don't know. My, my brain, I, I like that connection there, even though I'm wording it terribly. But uh, anyway, Diggs is now a new character. He's Thomas Jefferson, and even his mannerism already has changed. He seems like a lot, a lot more, I don't know. 
flamboyant, maybe. I mean, Lafayette was already kind of flamboyant, but did, like the, the little sashaying down the down the, the steps and the kissing to the crowd. I don't know. It's interesting. The acting part is different here. Oh, one other thing. I just let's just get this out of the way now. I really don't know that much about Thomas Jefferson, so before all you history nerds like start flipping out in the comments, I, let me let me just lay it out now. All I know about Thomas Jefferson is one. At one point, he was one of the the, the earlier presidents. I think like four or five. I'm not sure which one. He wrote the Declaration of Independence, which is like probably the most famous thing about him. I know that he owned a bunch of slaves. I did not know that he he opposed Alexander Hamilton, and those two are the reason we have a two-party system. I find that very interesting. I feel like there's one other thing about Thomas Jefferson that I know that I'm forgetting right now. But the point is, bare bones facts about him. So if, if I didn't say it, I probably don't know it. Don't spoil it if it's going to come up in the show, but just know I don't know it. Okay, let's continue. <laughs> So what did I miss? What did I miss? Virginia, my home sweet home, I wanna give you a kiss. I've been in Paris meeting lots of different ladies. I guess I basically missed the late 80s. I travel the wide, wide world and came back to this. Okay, uh, okay, uh... So... So many thoughts. If, if you're watching this, I'm assuming you've watched at least one of my other parts, so you so you know that I'm insane. <laughs> so um, hopefully you'll have the patience to bear with me through all of this. Uh, let's start with the the genre. Yeah. Okay. So this the genre of this song is it's, it's weird. Like it, it it's is it boogie woogie? It, it, like okay. First off, let me start with what is Boogie Woogie? Because I'm assuming most of you don't know. Boogie Woogie is an early 20th century, so like early 1900s, uh, form of blues music. But unlike most other subgenres of blues, it's really like up tempo and dancey. That's like the whole point of Boogie Woogie, hence Boogie. And it is one of the genres that was popular between the time that black musicians were creating and popularizing ragtime, which is another form of like up-tempo, fun piano music, and jazz music, which I don't have to explain what jazz music is to you. There was, in that period, as is the nature of all music, there were multiple music genres that were popular, and Boogie Woogie was one of the genres that was popular in between ragtime and jazz. And um, this this kind of reminds me of Boogie Woogie like a lot, but like my brain is like, why the f would Boogie Woogie be referenced in this? Like what, what I, like, you know, I don't want to have to bleep that out in editing. That's a lot of work. So uh, yeah, it might also be one of the other like 1500 subgenres of like early jazz. I don't know. I'm not a, a jazz pianist. Okay. I'm just I know a little bit of a lot of things, and one of the little bit of things I know is Boogie Woogie, and this sounds to me like Boogie Woogie. If one of you guys in the comments is like some music expert and you want to correct me on that and say it's some other genre, that's fine. A lot of Boogie Woogie songs are actually like more up-tempo than this, so it, it might be something else, but this this reminds my brain of Boogie Woogie, and um, that's, that's a really weird genre <laughs> to just like randomly have in in this this musical but then again like well hip-hop is used a lot in this in this musical and like jazz kind of birthed hip-hop in a way it was a process but kind of birthed hip-hop and you could argue that boogie woogie was one of the genres that would go on to birth jazz like it, it would influence jazz it also influenced like early rock and roll and stuff so the the point is that i i kind of get why but i don't i don't really get why if that makes sense um so that's that's really interesting speaking of hip hop hip hop was created in the 80s the 1980s but the 80s and he said i basically missed the late 80s 
which I know he's talking about the 1780s, but I just find it interesting that like the other founding fathers that we have been introduced to so far, most of them and most of their songs have been hip hop, which was like created and popularized in the late 1980s. And he's not using hip hop. And he said, I missed the late 80s. He didn't specifically say which late 80s. He just said the late 80s. That's interesting, right? I don't know. I'm probably like way out there in the deep end and everybody's going to be like, that's insane. But whatever. That's what my brain thought of. So um, yeah, this is like a, a really like interesting vibe for a song. Was that, was that not weird to y'all? If this isn't Boogie Woogie, it's something similar. That same like early jazz, like 1920s, 1930s period. Um, and that's like, that's such a random thing to just have thrown in here, but here we are. Oh, also, I really like the, the meta joke of Thomas Jefferson helping Lafayette write a declaration for fans when, when he played both characters. So he's like, he helped him. He, he wrote, did, no, you, okay, whatever. Anyway, I thought it was cool. So what did I miss? What did I miss? Virginia, my home sweet home. Okay, so um, so much is happening. So the the Secretary of State job that Alex did not take or did did not get off. I don't know. Whatever the the other job that he didn't get is now being given to Thomas Jefferson, which makes sense because. Uh, George Washington is from Virginia, and he's from Virginia, right? And so it, it would make sense that they know each other um, and that he would want him on his cabinet. And now we have the actor who plays Mulligan, whose name I am forgetting at this moment, is now James Madison, who helped write the Federalist Papers and was also a president at one point, right? Anyway, so that's that's cool. So now all of this is like coming full circle with the ending of the last song and like all of the, the, the stuff that came as a result of that. Uh, George Washington is still building his cabinet and all of these people we are now meeting in the play, which is interesting. Also, background dancers. They earn in every bit of money that, that they got paid for this. I mean, from the, from the, the high kick, opening the letter to the dude who hit the splits while another one slid over him. It's, it's, a lot of, it's a lot of craziness going on right now with the dancing. And I'm trying to like pick up on all the history bits so I don't look like an idiot in this video. But um, also I'm, I'm distracted by like all of, the, all of the happenings on screen. Also, is Madison sick? Why, is, why was he coughing like that when what's his face said his, his face was red? Is that, is that a tidbit about history that I don't know? Does he like get the plague and die or something? I just found that really weird. He's like, he's something, something looking red in the face. And then what's his face was like, <coughs> like he had. Oh, wait, no, I can't say that on YouTube or they'll destroy my video. Like he had that one virus that you all know exactly what I'm talking about that would make someone act like that. Okay, let's continue. Thomas, we're engaged in a battle for our nation's very soul. Can you get us out of the mess we're in? Hamilton's new financial plan is nothing less than government control. I've been fighting for the South alone. Where have you been, France? <laughs> we have to win. What did I miss? Jefferson, welcome home. Mr. Jefferson, Alexander Hamilton. Mr. Jefferson. 
to the next song. I got a couple more things to add. One, I didn't know the mother could sing like that. Okay, I didn't. I didn't know he he hit, he hit the little vocals with Madison. I feel like as as Mulligan, I'm calling him Mulligan because I can't see the future, so I don't know what the actually. I could just Google. I'm real quick. I'm gonna just Google what the actor's name is because he's not Mulligan anymore. So referring to him as a character he's not playing anymore is kind of weird. Who plays Mulligan in Hamilton? I I can't pronounce that, and I don't I don't want to disrespect that man by by even like like. Yeah, so anyway, Mulligan, uh, yeah, God, sorry guys, um, I feel like as Mulligan, he was mostly just rapping, I didn't, he, I didn't hear the, the little, the little vocal tones that he was giving right there as Madison, so I like the switch up that we're getting as they're playing new characters, also, I don't think that Diggs was singing the way he is singing now, uh, playing Thomas Jefferson, when he was Lafayette, so I, I feel like now that they're new characters, they're getting to express new musical sides, which it shows a lot of versatility on the part of the actors, but also uh, it's, it just, it, it helps separate the two characters easier for me mentally, even though they have the same face. But also now Diggs has his hair down, so like rest in peace my baguette with a bun joke, um, because now I'm gonna have to think of some other nickname for him. My, maybe I'll call him Happy Feet. Like he's, he's kind of crazy. I like it, like I like his vibe. It's like super playful. I definitely could see how him and Alex would start to butt heads because like Alex is like super intense and serious 24 seven. And this dude is just, just like having a good time. Um, but I like it. I think it's dope. He looks fly. Like his outfit is, is sick. I, I just like it. This, this intro song, very interesting, very engaging. I'm kind of biased because I like Lafayette and Diggs like portrayal of him so much that I'm kind of like already starting to like Jefferson, but like in this song, super dope. One other thing. Madison said that um, Alexander Hamilton's, he wasn't rocking with Alexander Hamilton's like financial plan. And here I thought they was going to be allies because they were both working on the Federalist Papers. So I guess like in between that and this, they fell out over some of the, the policies that Alexander was trying to implement. Again, I didn't know none of this. I'm, I'm trying to follow the, the plot, history, whatever, all of the details of what's going on. I don't know if I have that all the way right, but I... I was pretty sure that, like, since they were both working on the same goal before, that they were, they were allies. But in politics, there are no allies. There are only interests, and I guess their interests have disaligned from each other. And so, uh, here we are. Oh. Mr. Jefferson, Alexander Hamilton, Mr. Jefferson, the oh. So what did I mean? and gentlemen, you could have been anywhere in the world tonight. Secretary Jefferson, you have the floor, sir. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We fought for these ideals we shouldn't settle for less. These are wise words, enterprising men quote them. Don't act surprised, you guys, cause I wrote them. Ow, but Hamilton forgets. His plan would have the government assume states debt. Now place your bets as to who that benefits. The very seat of government where Hamilton sits. Not true. Ooh. A rap battle? Wait, 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 wait. Dog. That's genius. To, to, like, okay, hold on. To display this cabinet meeting where two political uh, adversaries are, uh, I guess, debating over a, I guess, I guess this is like an early political debate, basically, um, where they're debating like policies and stuff as a rap battle is so, so smart. Like even bringing out the actual like physical mics for them, surrounding them with like the seats and stuff. Um, uh, and are they about to like tag team him? Cause like James Madison's right there right now. It's, it's Jefferson versus Hamilton, but Madison's there. Maybe he's his hype man. I don't know. But um, yeah, this is, this is, no, because he said I was fighting for the South alone. So I, I think Madison is going to jump into this too. I don't know. Sometimes people don't fight fair rap battles. Sometimes you got to battle both of them. But um, yeah, this is really interesting. Also, the fact that like Jefferson quoted 
himself. Like he's like, don't act surprised. I I was surprised. I was not expecting the Declaration of Independence to like literally weave its way into the lyrics. But that's but that's Lynn's writing for you. You know, my boy, he got the golden pen. So um, very interesting. Also, I get why Jefferson would be slightly cautious or against the idea of something that strengthens the treasury being posed by the treasurer like it's kind of, you know it's conflict of interest in that particular thing i'm going to i don't know again the history behind this policy so i'm going to keep watching to see how this goes but so far i'm very invested in the whole happenings that are happening in this happening uh, our debts are paid, I'm afraid. Don't tax the South, because we got it made in the shade. In Virginia, we plant seeds in the ground. We create. You just want to move our money around. This financial plan is an outrageous demand, and it's too many damn pages for any man to understand. Stand with me in the... Okay, uh, d d obviously, the rapping is back. I, I just said that he was singing as a new character. Well, he's rapping now. And it's great. Uh, lots of, of internal rhymes like um, uh, have it made in the shade. Uh, something Right before that, the line before that, which ends in paid, there's also another like internal rhyme there. I love the fact that like every time they start to do something high level or like big brained government wise, uh, or anytime they want to like, display that a character is very intelligent, Lynn just immediately starts writing internal rhymes into their lines to show like, hey, this person is on another level. And the last person who we saw do that with was Lafayette towards the end of the war as he like became this competent general. Um, and then before that, obviously we saw it with Hamilton to distinguish him from the other like early colonists who weren't thinking on the level that he was thinking at. So this song setting them up as rivals, I guess he's like, Alex's new rap. I mean, Burr's off in the distance, so clearly he hasn't, like, well, I don't know that that's Burr. The, the, the actor might be playing somebody else, but uh, the actor who was the character of Burr before is off in the distance, so maybe Burr is still around. I mean, eventually he ends up shooting Hamilton, so clearly he doesn't, like, die in this phase, but setting up this new rival uh, for Hamilton as being someone on his level because that person also has like intricate rhyme schemes is very interesting, very smart. One thing I'm gonna take offense with though, not like literal offense, but you know, stick with me here, is his whole, oh, the South is good financially after the war because we're actually creating industry versus you guys are just moving money around and like we plant our seeds, that kind of thing. Like, like dog, you not planting nothing. So it's very easy to be like, we are creating all this money when it's on the backs of other people, you know? Thomas Jefferson ain't never planned a single nothing in his life, so whatever. The point is that I, I understand why from a Southern uh, wealthy person's perspective in this time, the Northerners trying to like amass all of the money in the North is something that they would be against given that they are creating so much money where they are, but at the same time bragging about something Bragging about work that you did not do yourself is super lame. The, it's too many damn pages to understand. That part makes me think of the fact that like one of the people on Thomas Jefferson's team is James Madison, who wrote 29 of the Federalist Papers and Hamilton wrote 51. But according to people in the comments, James Madison's approach was more of a quality over quantity approach, whereas Hamilton's was more of a quantity over quality approach. So he wrote a lot more, but each of his individual papers weren't as effective as James Madison's papers. Um, and so I think that his like little poking, it, like it's, it's too many pages for anyone to understand. I think that that might be a reference to like the trend that Hamilton has shown so far to be more of a, a machete than a scalpel. And as far as like, he's just like hacking away at certain political uh, arguments or issues instead of like cutting to the the root of what it is that needs to be said uh, from the perspective of the people on the other side of the the metaphorical battle or on the other side of the political aisle when britain tax our tea we got frisky imagine what gonna happen when you try to tax our whiskey thank you secretary jefferson <laughs> Secretary Hamilton, your response. Thomas, that was
was a real nice declaration. Welcome to the present. We're running a real nation. Would you like to join us? A stain mellow doing whatever the hell it is you do in Monticello. <laughs> if we assume the debts, the union gets the new line of credit, a financial diuretic, how do you not get it? If we're aggressive and competitive, the union gets a boost. You'd rather give it a sedative, a civic. Okay, all right, all right, all right, Mr. Hamilton, Mr. Hamilton. I'm going to need you to arrest you, sir, for assault, okay? My boy coming out swinging, okay? Where are you taking that? To Corazon. Corazon, uh, that doesn't compute. Uh, wait, uh, you're under arrest. I'm personally a fan of embedding, like, scientific references into... Your music, I do that a lot, like reference different like medical and, and other scientific things in my songs. I just think it's interesting. And so I really like his analogy for the financial uh, diuretic, which would help the flow of things. If you know what a diuretic is, then, then you, you will get my joke. Um, versus the sedative, which is what uh, Thomas Jefferson is, I guess, proposing. I don't really know what he's proposing. He just kind of spent the whole time like talking about Alexander Hamilton's plan sucking, but he he didn't say what his plan was, right? Like he did I miss that? I might have missed it. Whatever. The point is, whatever his plan is, Alex is saying that it's a sedative. And so his use of like the 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 medical analogies in his bars it just it really resonates with me like as a writer because I I like to do that as well. Also, prior to that, he had a few internal rhymes uh Jefferson ended off his thing with an internal rhyme that was really interesting with the man understand line. And there was another one like right before that. And so again, he's showing himself to be like lyrically competent and mentally competent in the course of his uh, opening statement. But Hamilton is on that same level coming right back at him. I think it was like um, credit, diuretic, uh, competitive sedative, which dope. Dope! I like it. I like the I like the writing in this song a lot. This is like kind of harkening back to the the vibe of my shot. Except now he's not alone when when he's rapping on this higher level. He is now being challenged by other people who are mentally on that same level, which is like so interesting. And also from a a enjoyer of great lyric standpoint, I'm. There's now twice as many people saying dope stuff, so that's dope. But I just I just find this like battle of wits very interesting. But also I'm I'm still while I like Jefferson and his like eccentric personality and also <laughs> Hamilton parodying pa parodying his eccentric personality uh, with like the Monticello line. I I still love Alex's writing, like his. His writing is still top tier. A civics lesson from a slaver. Hey neighbor, your debts are paid because you don't pay for labor. We plant seeds in the south. We create. They keep ranting. We know who's really doing the planting. Talk that talk, talk. Talk that talk. That talk, Mr. Hamilton. I said. I. You heard. I. I just. I just said that. I just I was just making that point like like one, two, three, four, five, like two minutes ago. Like it was it would it just happened. You was there, I was there. Oh man, I I needed that. That was that was clip back to when I said I could see the future in the last video, because I totally called that. I can see the future! Oh my goodness. I I really love that Lynn put that in there because like he didn't have to. If we being real, this ain't really got nothing to do with him. And he didn't have to write the scathing review of the Founding Fathers into this, but he did. And I like it because he read him for filth, bro. I like, yes, it's just like with the George Washington not yet moment from, oh my goodness, what song is that? Lawrence uh, said, is this freedom for everybody? I don't know why I can't think of what song that is, but. Yorktown? Yorktown? Yeah, let's say Yorktown. He, his uh, pointing out of the hypocrisy of literally Mr. Liberty and Freedom for All being a massive slave trader and slave owner uh, is, is just shoves to kiss. And then bragging about the fact that y'all are planting seeds and creating money uh, when you are doing neither is just, yeah. So I, I yeah, yes, I need, yes. Yeah, I, I, 
Alex ain't got nobody backing him right now, but I, okay, maybe the, the chick right here with the little scarf on, she's like, oh, uh, I'm, I'm with you, sis, because, um, yeah, that was, yeah, I didn't, I was, I was reading and listening, and, and it was, yeah, it hit me, okay, it hit me, I wasn't, I wasn't ready for that, I wasn't expecting him to come back with the, with, with the shots, okay, my boy, throw, my, he, he, threw, he threw the hook, okay, anyway, he said, uh, lessons from a, a slaver said he said lessons from a slaver you don't have debt because you don't pay your labor is <laughs> doc 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 yes okay anyway back to the Back to the point. We're just gonna we're we're gonna go back. We're gonna hear that again. I'm y'all y'all been trying to convince me to push me off Team Alex, bro. I'm Team Alex forever. Lauren's dream did not die with him. Okay, he's spitting right now. Oh, one other thing. I really really like that. This feels like a rap battle. You know, it doesn't feel like. Oh, this is a rap battle in a musical meant to act as an analogy of a like, you, no 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 no. no. This is a rap battle from the mic drop from Jefferson to Madison, uh, the mocking from Hamilton, the facial expressions from George Washington, my sis on the on their left, my right, um, like every it just does that make sense? It just has the the, the rap battle ethos in it, and uh, I think that's dope. It, I I like this song a lot. Like a, the last song was cool and interesting and funny and quirky, but this song is hard, boy. You don't pay for labor. We plant seeds in the south. We create. They keep ranting. We know. Who okay, real quick, real quick. We gotta go back real quick because I I didn't see this last time. Sis over here on the left with the poofy hair again. Our left, not their right. Our left, right here. Look look at her face, bro. Right, right, bro. Read that man for Phil. Told him right about himself to his face. Crazy. This is this is the accurate reaction right here. Yeah, I, actually, you guys can't see. I the setting setup, so you guys can't see the cursor. But uh, yeah, behind, well, Madison's butt. Uh, the the chick over on the left. Yeah, that's the that's the exact perfect reaction. I needed to point that out because all of the additional side acting just adds so much to it. it it's important, okay? It's important. Mm. And another thing is the age of enlightenment. Don't lecture me about the war. You didn't fight in it. Mm. You think I'm frightened of you, man? We almost died in the trench while well, you were off getting high with the French. Yeah. Thomas Jefferson always hesitant with the president. <laughs> Redison, Redison, a plan he has in jettison. Madison, you mad as a Haddison. Take your medicine. Damn, you in worse shape than the national Denison. See Yo, 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 wait. What did he say? I heard a record scratch as I stopped, so maybe I paused at the wrong point, but I don't care, okay? We need to talk about the absolute flurry of internal rhymes that was right there. Uh, President, reticent, uh, hold on. There's there's a bunch. We're, we're going back. Thomas Jefferson always hesitant with the president. Reticent, there is in a plan he has in jettison. Madison, you- Hesitant with the president, reticent, there isn't, which is another one, plan that he hasn't jettisoned. That's, that's five internal rhymes that I caught just now in one line. Crazy. Crazy, bro. I thought Hamilton was a bad man before. He was like, you haven't even seen my final form. Oh, my goodness. That's insane. And then this line right here is insane, too. It, it kind of got overshadowed by the line right like before it. But this Madison, your matters at Hatterson is still continuing the line rhyme scheme but from before but the reason that i find this line really interesting is madison mad as a hatterson actually that's even harder than i thought it was because i was connecting madison to you know mad as a hatterson but when you think about it which i don't know if this is going to make sense to everybody but this you mad as a hatterson sounds like madison and jefferson put together so it's like mad -a, which is the the beginning part, mad as a, and then Hatterson, Jefferson. Does that make does that make sense? I don't know. The point is, this you mad as a Hatterson part sounds like both of his two opponents' names put together, like syllable wide. I don't know the right word for it, but it it it's it's in there if you go digging. Okay, um, take your medicine, bro. He's literally he's dying. He's Hamilton then killed him. He's yeah, that's insane. 
bruh, <laughs> bruh, that, bruh, y'all was saying for a while, act two is better than act one, like, you, it's gonna blow your mind, I was like, okay, whatever, I, I got it, okay, it's, it's great, I know, they're all good, no, 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 y'all, I, I wasn't believing, I was skeptical, okay, I was, I was skeptical, I was cynical, um, y'all are right, this is crazy, this is, the, the, yo, this is, bruh, <laughs> what, um, but it also makes sense that the, the best rapping, in my opinion, that we've seen from Hamilton so far would come when he's being met with a peer, when he's being met with a mental equal, because that is what pushes you. It's kind of, they're kind of having like a, a lyrical arms race right now. And so um, just like in a Cold War situation, when you have a rival who's on your level, it pushes you to advance at a, at a level that creates rapid innovation in your uh, overall technology, warfare, so on and so forth. And that's that's kind of what has happened in this like moment of uh, Hamilton meeting Jefferson. He's like, oh, oh, you're bad, but I'm better. And so, um, yeah, yeah. I want to see, okay, I need to see Jefferson's response to this. Let's, let's, let's go. You didn't fight in it. You think I'm fighting of you, man? We almost died in the trench or you were off getting high with the French. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, guys. I just, I got it. I got to say, like, look at my very face right here. <laughs> ah! Ah! That's crazy, because that, that's really, this is, that that's the correct reaction, because he's really eviscerating my man right now. Um, I also like that he called him out for, like, not actively participating in the war. It's like, dog, you was off chilling, talking to French baddies, and smoking whatever you were smoking. I don't, I'm assuming he was smoking. I don't know what they were using to get high on 1780s. But it's like, we. I was stealing cannons. And you was out here stealing panties. We are not the same, bro. Um, that's, that's, that's crazy. That's, yeah, okay. We're going to, I'm going to go. But, like, I'm, I'm going to need y'all to appreciate that I, I need to, like, soak this in okay it's, it's coming through my pores is what i'm saying that's a that's a weird imagery to put out there but whatever the point is this fire and i like i like hearing it in digestible pieces what am i doing with my fingers i don't know but let's go sitting there useless as two shits hey turn around bend over i'll show you where my shoe fits <laughs> excuse me Ah. Take a walk. Hamilton, take a walk. <laughs> a word. You don't have the votes. You don't have the votes. <laughs> Such a blunder. Sometimes it makes me wonder why I even bring the thunder. Why he even brings the thunder. Mm. Such a blunder. Sometimes it makes me wonder why I even bring the thunder. Ooh, ooh, okay, Mr. Jefferson, you, you lost. Okay, let's be clear. You took the L. Okay, from here on out, you're going to be known as Lamis Lefferson. What? From here on out, you're going to be known as Lamis Lefferson. But uh, that, that little flurry there at the end was nice. You should have added that on to your verse before you got eviscerated. But um, it was nice. He's nice. He's nice with it, okay? The mic, the mic was steaming once he got off of it. But, like, you know... Hamilton said, I do this, big dog, okay? Unlike you, I was not born into wealth. I didn't get here off daddy's money. I got here off this, and I just used it to take your lunch money. Again, I'm with it, okay? That's a bar. And it's not a 12-point a, a rhyme like Hamilton just did to Jefferson. But I also, I just said that off the dome. I didn't, I didn't like, sit and write that. So I'm going to need some credit, okay? Anyway, I still don't understand, like, the, the financial... Like, like the financial stuff that they're arguing over, really something to do with like Alexander Hamilton wanting the money or the debt or the taxes, which are different things. But one of those, like all three of those things have been referenced at some point with Hamilton wanting that uh, centralized in New York and uh, Thomas Jefferson is opposed to that. But I don't, I don't really understand what Thomas Jefferson's plan is. And like even going back and watching it again, I don't, I don't think he's mentioned it yet, so I don't know. We shall see. But I, th I thought it was interesting. You want to pull yourself together? I'm sorry, these Virginians are birds of a Young man, I'm from Virginia, so watch your mouth. So we let Congress get held hostage by the South. 
Yes, Mr. Washington, you are from the South. And most of what he said also applies to you. Uh, pot, meat, kettle. Okay, um, that's not why I paused, though. Although I found that very funny. Uh, they brought back the, the, um... The, here comes the general, the pride of Mount Vernon. Like, during that part from uh, uh, Right Hand Man, the da 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 what, I don't, what instrument is that? Like, the bass line? Sure. The bass line from that. It's now um, orchestral, and it's happening in the background, which, I don't know why that is. I'm not, I, I was hoping that an idea would come to me of why they decided to reference Right Hand Man there, because that's not the song. He doesn't get chewed out in Right Hand Man, right? That's a different song. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. He gets yelled at and meet me inside. So I'm not, I'm not 100% sure. I was thinking, oh, they're referencing Right Hand Man because that's the song that Hamilton gets yelled at. But that's not true. That's the song that Hamilton becomes Washington's Right Hand Man. Um, he gets yelled at in a different song. But it's kind of, it, this seems like the same vibe. Hamilton did too much, said too much, yet again, and uh, he's getting scolded for it, yet again. Um, so, yeah. But was he wrong, though? Like, was, was he wrong? Was he wrong? No, he was not. Uh, he was not. So, um, yeah, Team Alex up 2,000 points. It is what it is. I'll, that's all I'm saying, okay? I, I, I didn't see Burr fighting for people's liberties, okay? Burr was out here stealing people's wives and shooting people. And y'all out here like, oh, Burr's not actually. Yes, he is. He's the villain. Thomas Jefferson's the villain, too. Team Alex up 3,000 points. Just, just since I was talking, Alex got another dub. So 3,000 points. Uh, Team Alex, we in the lead cry about it um anyway back to, to alex getting yelled at and also like subtly dissing his boss um <laughs> chaos oh one other thing that i wanted to say that i that just popped back into my head sorry guys i know it's it's a lot this song is it's been anytime they do something like super crazy my my brain just goes like oh this this, this it's just a lot of thoughts the the piano melody in the rap part of this, like the, the battle rap part before he starts getting yelled at, reminds me of the uh, backing piano in If I Ruled the World by Nas featuring Lauren Hill. Uh, I don't know if you guys have ever heard that song. For those of you on Patreon, I'm gonna actually clip in the part of the song that I'm talking about so you can hear it and hear what I'm saying. Cause it doesn't happen the entire song. It's like during a specific part of the song that that piano melody comes in. But for those of you on YouTube, because that would obviously get this video blocked. I'm not going to do that, and I would just advise you to listen to that song. It's a great song, so just listen to it anyway. But there is a, a piano melody in If I Ruled the World by Nas featuring Lauryn Hill that reminds me of the like main piano flurry that happens in the background of the rap battle. I just found that interesting, so I'm pointing that out. And also, sometimes in other rap songs, he references like other songs from the 90s and when I haven't pointed that out, people have like flipped out in the comments. And so I'm doing it now, okay, okay. So great piano part in the background there. And it, this reminds me of that. We need this no, plan. you need to convince more folks. Well, James Madison won't talk to me. That's a non-starter. Ah, winning was easy, young man. Governing's They're harder. They're being intransigent. You have to find a compromise. They don't have a plan, they just hate mine. Convince them otherwise. And what happens if I don't get congressional approval? I imagine they'll call for your removal. Sir. Figure it out, Alexander. That's an order from your commander. That's where I'm supposed to stop. Uh, please proceed to the outro for more gloating, more dissections, more insane thoughts, and emoji directions. Okay, bye. Okay, so um, I don't know if y'all want some lotto numbers. Boy, I was on it this video. I totally called the uh, the slaver call out. I totally called the fact that like they they were just attacking Hamilton. I mean, it's it's basically politics hasn't changed at all in 200 years. They were just attacking Hamilton. They weren't even really talking about his policies. I mean, they were, but they weren't presenting their own policies. You know, uh, it's very easy to attack someone else's policies when you ain't got your own policies that you want to present. So. Yeah, yeah, I, I totally, I, yeah, yeah, I, I, I caught that too, bro, they was just hating, really. Also, we had the reference to uh, Right Hand Man again, 
via the uh, dying is easy, young man living is harder. But he said something like uh, the living is easy and governing is harder or something, something like that. It was a reference there. It was at the end when he was basically talking to uh, Alex to suck it up. People don't like you, but part of like being in a government that isn't a dictatorship is you have to work with people who don't like you. So get to work figuring out how to make it work. And um, yeah, I thought that was really dope. Uh, there was something else in there that I was I was going to mention and or reference and or talk about. But um, yeah, I was kind of floored by the fact that like he literally he said what I he's me and him locked in boy his EQ not that good like his interpersonal skills not not on fleek at all but uh he's I, I I'm with him mentally I, I get him where he going how he going you know and so I be understanding how he thinking you know and so I, I feel very validated in that I, I enjoyed that this video was like super long but I I felt like I felt like that's the best rap song so far. I'ma just be real with y'all. I think this is the best rap song that they have had up until this point. The lyrics on this were really great. I like the framing of the like basically political debate about policies as a rap battle. And I think they pulled it off really, really well. And so, um, and Alex got in trouble again because that's what he does. But um, was he wrong? I don't know if this like whatever policy that he is uh, presenting gets pushed through or not. I don't know how this turns out, but I know that I enjoyed this. So thank you so much for being here. I really do appreciate it. Uh, I, I had a lot of fun with this video. It was like very high energy and intense and crazy. Seeing the actors as new characters was like really, really fun. Uh, but George Washington and Alex are the same so far. And so uh, I'm interested to see if any of the other actors or actresses change into new characters as we go along in act two but uh so far i like thomas jefferson even though he on the other side of my boy alex and he took a fat l um i do like his character he's funny he's eccentric it's cool madison seems like a stick in the mud though i don't, I don't i'm not really rocking with him but his vocals were really good so um yeah anyway i'm rambling at this point it, there was a lot happened and my brain is like bouncing all these ideas around so uh thank you so much for being here i really really appreciate it if you have watched it to this point in the video definitely make sure to leave a crown emoji in the comment section down below i don't know if you guys have noticed i'm, do, I'm doing like two videos in a row have the same emoji uh and so this is the second part of that crown emoji video uh because you guys are royal thank you so much for staying it means a lot i know that like following my train of thought can be like kind of confusing but uh hopefully this was at least entertaining for you if not also informative so thank you so much definitely make sure to leave a crown emoji down below so i can thank you personally for watching the video and definitely make sure to subscribe if you haven't i have a bunch of other parts to go as you can see so hit that subscribe button not to miss those videos and i'll be seeing all of you guys here on the channel next time peace these guys no blues A new love, but we know that it accrues Like time in a cue, shampoo, new bamboo Much more of it will ensue I'm caught in this trance in loo Of sinking down in the stew You change up the brew, now life tastes so brand new It's delicious like fondue Under the moonlight tonight Stars and hot shimmering Shimmering, who I am You're a bad light, you are. Let me know.